Indies must win the game. England's run rate is too good for them. They need the points. Not only do they need the points, they need to win it at a canter if they have any chance. They're going to be batting first again. There's Sherwin Campbell coming down the stairs with Wavell Hines. There is their side. There's only one change in it from the one that was decimated by England yesterday. The spinner, Mahendra Nagamatu, comes into the side and he's there instead of Franklin Rose. They're in the hot tub because it is still pretty freezing up here in Durham and they're in as good a place as any. Zimbabwe looking strong. John Rennie has come in. He only arrived uh, in the country the other day. Very handy medium pacer and he's there instead of Paul Strang. Almost caught and bowled. That was a great effort. Wavell Hines looking to get off the mark, hitting it straight down the ground. And a reaction from Brian Strang, just not quick enough. The first sign of aggression from the West Indies this morning. Wavell Hines smashing this in the air, back at Strang, but it came back at him so quickly, he wasn't able to get a hand on it. There's John Rennie, 44 matches, 34 wickets. Again, just a little bit of in movement, stand and deliver for Sherwin Campbell, not a great shot. Then he came into the side, very late replacement. So late, in fact, he's got no number. <laughs> That's a better looking shot. It's timed it nicely, Sherwin Campbell. The outfield is quicker today, and that's the first boundary for the West Indies. It was nice for a batsman to feel one right off the middle. It's bolded. It, it Campbell's strong area. He likes them short and wide, Sherwin Campbell. That one was right in the slot, and he won't make too many mistakes, Sherwin Campbell, when deliveries are bold there. Oh, that's a beauty. That really is struck with power. First boundary for Wavell Hines, second for the West Indies. Wavell Hines given enough room, played it well, got on top of the bounce, hit it down. Good timing, good contact. And he's away again. Not quite as well timed, but uh, well enough. Successive boundaries for Wavell Hines off the back foot. Impressive stuff. It's a strong man, Wavell Hines. A strong young man. Punched it through the extra cover region with great power. The West Indies opening partnership so far in this series, the highest of 33 in the first game against Zimbabwe. And not much since. If they're to have a big score today, which they really do need, they have to have a much better opening stand than they've had so far. Set a foundation for the rest of the batsmen to come in. Brian Lara, Jimmy Adams, etc. Oh, that's a beauty. Just swung in a tad and moved off the wicket. Not one keeping the batsman honest. It's a great delivery. Scramble seam. I've just left Campbell on pitching. This is a beautiful delivery. Just one big over so far, somewhere around eight runs for the West Indies. It's been pretty slow going. No wickets lost. A lot of work to do. And they'll have to hurry here. Misses. A bit of urgency from the West Indies and quite right too. Very good strokes already today. I think much better than that one. It's a beauty. Wavell Hines given room. And he hasn't missed out. Straight off the middle. Lovely full follow through. This sound feels a bit quicker than it was yesterday. gone through the area where third slip would be and it's gone for four. It's the sort of things um, 
West Indies must do, they've got to play strokes um, in really attacking fashion. Well, a show when Campbell goes at it outside off stump, he goes at it hard. Well, that's a wonderful stroke. Hines has been playing the drive to both back and front foot with uh, tremendous power today. That was a beauty. Well, look at the high follow through there, all the way up, over the shoulder. He does give it the full Monty through the covers. That's gone straight through him. Hit with great power. Magnificent cover drive. The full follow through once again from Hines. He's very strong in that area and that brings up the West Indies 50. Run rate nearly four and over. He's done him again. Neil Johnson uh, won't be very pleased with himself but he certainly won't be very popular with the bowler. Put him in there specifically for that. He's had eight runs go. It's gone straight through Neil Johnson. Wavell Hines again, giving it everything. No point in chasing that one. Four more. Hines 32 at this stage. Campbell 21. 63 for no wicket from 17 overs. Just those three maidens. And uh, the chart showing the odd big over gave momentum to uh, the West Indian side. Ian Bishop is with me. It's a great need for urgency in the West Indian batting today and Campbell showed it quite well. The running between the wickets was exemplary and it was what was needed at the top of the order. Now, that's an extraordinary moment because what none of us could decide here, the ball was called a no ball by the umpire at the bowler's end. What we couldn't decide was whether this was a stumping chance, Ian, Ian or could it have been an attempted run? Well, I thought from this angle it was a run. You just see Campbell looking back there and just for a moment hesitating and that final step there sort of indicated that he might have been looking for a run so it was a bit far of a fine line it was too and in fact Trevor Jesty the third umpire decided not to make a decision at all straight after it Wavell Hines played this murderously good pull stroke and then uh, Campbell was beaten outside off stump. I think he was upset a bit by Heath Streak, who was much the best of the Zimbabwe bowlers. He was the one man in uh, the middle of the piece here who looked like he might restrict the West Indians on a very good pitch. Hines again, and out. Almost as if the catcher, Stuart Carlisle, in position and waiting. Was always on the cards. Left-handed Villion spinning the ball back into the left-handed Hines. Was always likely to go leg side with the turn. Not enough power on it though. Not timed as well as he probably would have liked. And straight into the lap of the man at deep mid-wicket. Triumphant. Wavell Hines gone for 42. The West Indies are now 86 for 1. Great hand for Brian Lara. There isn't a big crowd in here today. Full at 15,500 yesterday. I would think get around about, I don't know, two to 3,000 today, but they're still pleased that he's walking out to bat. Well, every crowd has a silver lining. Hines going to the pavilion meant Lara leaving it. He looked in a bit of pain, Ian, almost as if he'd tweaked a hamstring or something. Obviously so. He was limping from the first run that he took when he came in. He seemed to have disturbed something at the back of his leg. But like all great players, he fought on. And when they're injured is when they're most deadly. Yeah, Andy Flower realising, I think, that Lara's the danger man. He just wanted his men to crank things up a bit. He's got a half chance there, a glove and exclamations from the Zimbabwe fielders. Dirk Fillion with his hands on his head, but uh, you sort of felt they were clutching at straws. Lara, even though he was limping, had looked remarkably sound when he first came in. Defensive strokes were going back down the pitch. Jimmy Adams had chosen to bat. The weather was cold, but the ball wasn't swinging around. What was this, a painkiller? Well, I would suspect it was. He seemed to be grimacing quite a lot. A lot of pain in the back of the leg, but the painkillers worked. He certainly did, and I love the way he took his helmet off. It was nice to see a batsman, both batsmen, in a cap. Lara put uh, the shades on as well but it was very nice to be able to see uh, the faces of the players enjoying this sort of stroke play i mean campbell through the covers there delightful stuff and it brought up for the hundred for the west indians they were just starting to go along at quite a lick
Wangle Hines has played some beautiful pull shots off the Zimbabwe medium paces. Look how well placed this ball was as well, this shot here. You can just see as the ball pitches there, that's where the ball's landed. He's managed to avoid that deep square leg man, placing it very well wide of the field that's set by the Zimbabwe medium paces. But when he faces the spinner, Dirk Villeurn, again, I think he's looking here to hit the ball straight down the ground. But just a little tiny bit of spin from the left arm spinner makes him hit the ball squarer accidentally. And he finds that man posted neatly at deep square leg. That's gone very fine. It's going to beat the fielder at third man. Four more to the West Indies. Fine shot. Lovely one day shot. Sean Campbell, who want to bet the full 50 overs. A little skidder, Guy Whittle. He comes on and look at Campbell just angling it away. That's neatly done. to the best of Brian Lara. Great footwork. Lovely pre-swing of the bat. And got it straight off the middle. Sherwin Campbell's on 49. He'll have to be quick. And he's made it. Sherwin Campbell brings up his 15th one day 50. Been a good knock. Taken uh, 82 balls, three boundaries. Laying a good platform for the West Indies. And he's enjoying it. Yeah, sure. Sherwin Campbell was impressive today and so often when he does well, the West Indies get a good total. Shots like that were what the was made of. And in partnership with Brian Lara, they put on a significant stand to take the West Indies towards an impressive total. The partnership ebbed and flowed one minute. Brian was aggressive. The next minute, it was Campbell's turn. And here's Brian now as he turns away from camera. Look, he's got Sarwan's shirt on, number 53. Why might that be, you ask? Well, last night, for charity, he signed one of his own shirts, and that's a golfing charity that he's involved with in Scotland. So uh, I don't know whether they've only given him one or what, but anyway, that was Brian Lara wearing uh, Sarwan's shirt. Campbell kept going, and this too was to bring up the 100 partnership and Ian Bishop just making uh, a good point I think about how they were dovetailing well in the partnership and when one was maybe a bit quieter the other took over a bit. That's correct and that's what partnerships are all about one partner taking over when the other one is struggling and then Lara decided to get on the go a good shot straight down the ground it was wonderful to watch. <laughs> and when he decides to get on the go I can tell you one thing for certain, the Manhattan chart starts to bulk up. The New York skyline looking in favour of the West Indians. Oh! Cracker jack of a pool stroke. He did seem to have ages to play it. And it's a pretty exhilarating way to go to 50. Great strike, 91. fielder six high down the ground smashed it away again he streaked nothing he can do the ball is being blistered across the outfield. Astonishing stuff from one of the great entertainers the world has ever seen. That's a beauty, that's the best of them all. Brian Charles Lara is back. <laughs> 22 off the over, the spectators are going to start calling for helmets. Stays in this ball. Well, 
Well, it's premeditated, but it's great improvisation. He's looking for two. One hundred for Sherwin Campbell. A very nice performance. And Jimmy Adams and the whole of the West Indian team stand to applaud him. Great grins on the faces of happy men. He has come out, struck the ball superbly to all parts of the ground. That's a wonderful innings. Blasted it away. Four more. A procession of boundaries. And he's gone. Well, that will be a great relief for the uh, Zimbabwean fielders, captain, bowler, and supporters. It's a lovely inning from Brian Lara. Out for 87. 259 for two. And Dirk Bullion will be mighty pleased with that. He came in for some almighty hammer from Brian Lara. There is something that happens so often when you break a partnership, then you get the next player, and Sherwin Campbell has got. Amazing. Played so well, Sherwin Campbell. Anchored the team, and then this happened. He just flicked it straight to the man. Hardly had to move. He had to just roll his wrist in. just a little bit more. Alistair Campbell accepts the catch. And Sherwin Campbell departs for 105, but he's played his part. Weston is in a very strong position, 260 for three. In the air, and out. Well, wickets going down all over the place here for the West Indies. And Chris Gale has gone. Streak has got the wicket uh, on a full toss. Very soft dismissal, Chris Gale. Changed his mind and not quick enough. Just stopped his shot completely and let the ball hit the bat and it looped up to uh, Alistair Campbell. He has his second catch. Two easy ones for him. Gale departs. And, uh, just not what the West Indies would have hoped for. They wanted more acceleration and they've lost a couple of wickets. Well, a mini collapse after the loss of Lara and Campbell. Mind you, we still enjoy Ricardo Powell. Oh, he's a gifted player, and with time and with experience, hope in the West Indies is that he will ascend the throne held by supreme batsmen. Now, Heath Streak, one of the master fielders in the world. I've got him up there as probably one of the best two or three outfielders you could ever imagine. Speed to the ball, quick pickup, and brilliant fast flat throwing. And I'm afraid that does for Powell, who finds himself a run out from the, near the boundary by uh, Heath Street. 287 for five. Jacobs unbeaten with seven, and Nagamuta with two. At the end of that innings, there are the Zimbabwe bowlers, Villier, and somehow coming back with three for 75. 287 for five, the West Indies, having chosen to bat this morning. Zimbabwe need 288 at 5.76 per over if they're to win this match. It's all about whether the West Indies, though, can do something about the net run rate. And early on, they made life difficult for the Zimbabweans. No timing for Neil uh, Johnson. And then such sharp fielding with Captain Jimmy Adams setting the example that Guy Whittle was unable to uh, steal a single. There was a debut, too, for uh, Mahendra Nagamutu. Great moment for him. And uh, all in all, you'd say that Zimbabwe had their work cut out. There's an appeal this time. He's been given. John Hampshire says it was an inside edge. Woody Jacobs did well. He was coming forward. The easiest thing to do as a wicketkeeper. West Indies have the breakthrough. Johnson's gone. He's a danger man. Two half centuries against the West Indies in his previous two innings. Dylan's got rid of it. Very good delivery. 
taking the inside edge of the bat, very close off stump, smart catch by Ridley Jacobs, but very good bowling by Mervyn Dillon, removing the dangerous Neil Johnson for four. Zimbabwe now 18 for one. Well, it didn't get any easier, at all, immediately at least. An inside edge there from Murray Goodwin, 52 balls for the first boundary to take the score to 34 for one. 54 for one it was, and it was very, very difficult for Zimbabwe at the top of the innings. Crucial, too, that uh, the West Indies, I've said it a few times, but the West Indies have to bowl them out cheaply to improve net run rate. Sorry, Ian, your point about the West Indian bowlers there. Well, it was searching, probing, and very disciplined early on. There was a lot of playing and missing going on, but in order to get on with the game after deliveries like these, it would take shots like this. Yeah, very important that if you're going to get sort of more than six and over, you need an early push. That worm has to uh, increase dramatically to the top right-hand corner of the page if they're to do anything about it. Jimmy Adams had chosen to bat first. I think he backed his bowlers to defend against Zimbabwe, but he knew they'd have to work hard and retain some consistency. much better pitch than yesterday the ball's coming through truly and they can play shots like that they've brought up the 50 Zimbabwe 51 for 111.1 what a good shot to bring it up with that got him nicely caught Guy Whittle has gone just run short 2,000 limited overs and he'll be very cranky about that it was a good authentic square drive but placed straight to Ricardo Powell I think there's some marks out for Merv Dillon he's been slanting it in all the time and this one he's let go straight on with the arm and it's just collected the outside edge quite a healthy part of the bat from Guy Whittle but he departs and will be disappointed with that they were just beginning to create some problems for the West Indies. Guy Whittle out for 23, 55 for two. Oh, the serious trouble. Well, the whole thing was a mess up. Campbell is steaming. Goodwin is standing still accepting no share of the responsibility and the West Indians are just mighty relieved that the jumbly jumbly run out was pulled off. Dreadful moment for Alistair Campbell. Big mix up. The loss of a vital wicket. Campbell, one of the informed players for Zimbabwe. He could have kept the scoreboard turning over but good feeling by Nagamutu. At cover, dived on it, fumbled it, couldn't find it for a while but had the good sense of calmness to recover and the throw wasn't that great either but Campbell was well out of the picture Campbell's gone for 12 as in now 79 for 3 oh it's a super stroke there's the worm the wickets underneath. Three of them have been taken so far by the West Indies. Just over a hundred. Twenty-two overs have been bowled. Very big appeal again. There could be a run out, and this will be interesting as well. The run out is the one that's the danger for Andy Flower. Well, it was a direct hit. Excellent bit of fielding. The bail's up. He's about a uh, six inches short. He's gone for 11. Four for four. Andy Flower just out in that mix-out, run-out, and now on the balcony observing things. At this stage, worried, I would think, by the way that uh, the West Indies are bouncing back. 104 for four when Flower was run out and things much uh, in the hands of Murray Goodwin and Andy, Fla uh, Andy Flower's brother Grant. It could have been so difficult for him having been involved in so many runouts in the innings but he kept his head. 
Yes, he did, and, and it's, it's actually a very important point that uh, Ian Bishop makes there, that you get involved in two runouts, and you can be so busy thinking about that that you lose focus on the job at hand, which is to settle back into your own rhythm, get a partnership going with Grant Flower, which he was doing, and uh, we'll pick it up with 83 needed from 54 balls. Clever batting. It takes confidence and skill and a very good eye. <laughs> Beautiful shot. He ran down and the ball being on a good length gave him the opportunity to flick it away at the top of its bounce. Great use of the wrists. This is a good stroke. Oh, played so late. What quality. Now, six. Gone over the rope. Taken by Ricardo Powell about two feet behind the line. And that's the moment when Jimmy Adams thought that Ricardo Powell had taken the catch, and that's the moment when he realised he hadn't. Oh. oh, no, Jimmy. They needed a big partnership, and now they've got one. They're in sight, uh, Zimbabwe. Still a bit of work to do, though. <laughs> oh, and he's very sequestered, and... Up has come the 100 to Murray Goodwin. Had easy have been an overthrow. Goodwin started off playing and missing at the faster bowlers. He's shown wonderful temperament to come back and make 100 out of 128 balls. Oh, what a shot. That was a super stroke. It's the attention to detail which could determine the outcome of this game. If Ridley Jakers had taken this catch or this stumping from Murray Goodwin on 31, things might have been totally different. Then, more recently, he missed the stumps here, Jacobs, in a possible run out of Goodwin, way short of his ground, and in the same over, he could also run out Grant Flower. He missed again. So it just really hasn't been Ridley Jacobs day. Now, there is a man out at long on, but he's too wide. This is the over where Zimbabwe have to give it a dash. They haven't quite got that off the middle of the bat, but it's still four. It didn't come absolutely off the meat of the bat. This is a great setup now. Every ball is going to change the game. If there's a boundary, it changes the game, and if there's a dot ball, it changes the game. Well, that'll be a wide for sure. another one well, whatever Jimmy Adams said to him take it easy don't worry just relax not working at the moment shot what a shot he's picked the spot again a beautiful stroke away through extra cover Ward in off the over. Yes, two. Have to be quick. It's split the field. Oh, 
Oh, they've managed to save it. Two of them looked as though they were going to collide in a moment. Would have been a moment of madness. Quick thinking by Brian Lara. Yeah, he realised he was going to collide and he wasn't going to go down and hit, go head first, so he used the boot. That was very quick thinking. Saved a run. Ten to win from nine balls remaining. Ah, uh, that's well bowled by Gale. So he's bowled a dock ball. It's the first one in three overs. And Zimbabwe taking the lead. West Indies at this stage with 271. Second off. It's going to be safe. It's miscued. They'll get two for it. Seven off this over so far. Eight needed to win from seven balls. Oh dear. That was a full toss round about middle and leg and it has gone like a rocket to the boundary. Four to Grant Flower, four to Zimbabwe and it's 284 for four. No ball called, and he did look as though uh, he'd lost his run on the way in under the pressure. And they took a run, so that's two. victory. That is one of the best wins you will ever see in a limited overs international. Zimbabwe came from the clouds. West Indies were hot favourites. They put up a very, very big target and Zimbabwe have won it in the final over in dashing style. Brilliant stuff. It may not have been a full house, but boy, those that were here enjoyed it. 290 for four in the run chases.